Hello and welcome to the Australian Maritime College International Student Webinar. My name is Alicia Perry and the Australian Maritime College is a specialist institute of the University of Tasmania. Now we'll just ease into today to get our final attendees joining us. And firstly, I would like to open with acknowledging the traditional owners of this land, past, present and emerging. Just give a couple of moments. Today, I am fortunate to have some guests joining me for our webinar and I have with me Dr. Vikram Garinya, Acting Director of the National Centre for Maritime Engineering and Hydrodynamics. My name is Alicia Perry and I am the AMC Outreach and Engagement Officer. So thank you again so much for joining us today. So the Australian Maritime College, as I mentioned, is a specialist institute of the University of Tasmania. We are the Australian National Institute for Maritime Education, Training and Research. AMC is also one of the seven founding members of the International Association of Maritime Universities, which represents five continents. So the growing maritime, defence, marine and offshore sectors are an exciting and strategic area of growth for AMC and the University of Tasmania as a whole. And throughout today's presentation, we will talk to you about some key areas that we are working with our strategic partnerships, our industry connections, as well as, of course, our course information. I do have a special guest joining us at the end and uh, she'll be sharing with us her personal journey through finding AMC and also her studies and where she sees her future with her career prospects. So to give you an introduction to the Australian Maritime College, AMC is globally recognised as being a centre for excellence, a multi-million dollar suite of specialist teaching, learning and research facilities are internationally acclaimed and are used both by our students on campus, as well as industry, government organisations and worldwide leading edge research. Um, which is a huge part of what we offer across our course studies as well. So when students are studying with us, they get an education filled with experience and access to real industry opportunities. Uh, nestled on the, the beautiful island of Tasmania, in the south of um, southern coast of Australia, it offers a really nurturing, safe environment for students to study when on campus with us. However, there is a wide range of online opportunities as well. We offer a wide range of courses from vocational training, but through to bachelor, postgraduate degrees as well, and doctorates, which span across some really distinct maritime uh, areas. So maritime engineering and hydrodynamics, which Dr. Vikram Garinya is going to speak about with us today. Maritime business and international logistics is a hugely growing area of our studies, particularly with our international student cohorts. We then also have ocean going studies, which range from small vessels through to your large ocean going vessels that run through our international waters. So why choose AMC and the Australian Maritime College at the University of Tasmania? Um, we're going to share with you some different elements of this, uh, but AMC has a vibrant and culturally diverse community and a really strong community value system and environment for our students to study amongst. Uh, it provides them with smaller class sizes. It enables students and our teaching staff to develop those really close working relationships and often having them refer to each other on a first name basis, but also sharing global networks as well. And this expands across all of our study areas, not just the student cohort or the study area that a student may be enrolled in. 
our highly skilled graduates are also in demand worldwide. And again, that covers all of our study areas from maritime engineering and the maritime business and international logistics degrees. And there is a range of accommodation options and scholarship options available to our students. We look forward to taking you on this journey with us this afternoon. I hope we've got a few other people who have joined us um, in this last few minutes. And uh, we're going to go into a little bit more depth in regards to what I've touched on so far with our introduction. So one of the really key and world renowned areas of AMC and our reputation is our industry partnerships. So we're proud to be an experienced contributor to the international maritime sector. And as I mentioned, we are a founding member of the IAMU and most recently acknowledged as number one in excellence, as a centre of excellence globally within this 65 member organisation across those five continents. We maintain close relationships with our key industry stakeholders and our students gain that access to industry partnerships throughout their studies and through their interactions with our qualified and highly skilled staff who have spent time in the industry. AMC also has a commercial arm which helps to support our activities within the facilities. And our facilities are used, as I mentioned, not only for our current student cohorts, but also for research and industry leaders who come and utilize some of the best facilities in the Southern Hemisphere, all suited on our campus in Launceston, Tasmania. Another key strategic partnership we hold is with the Naval Shipbuilding College. And this is where together we can deliver expertise to seize the opportunities with the growing naval shipbuilding enterprise from the Australian government of up to $90 billion. I'd like to now hand over to Dr. Vikram Garinya, who will talk us through some of the key facilities that we have. Um, and talk about how they interact with our courses as well from undergraduate, postgraduate and doctorate levels. Over to you. Thank you, Alicia. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Alicia mentioned, my name is Dr. Vikram Garni. I'm the Acting Director for Maritime Engineering and Hydrodynamics Centre. Next slide, please, Alicia. So, um, at AMC, we have various facilities. Um, and in fact, you know, one of the key highlight of AMC's education is the facilities. Um, one of them actually, what you can see here on your screen is the Maritime Simulation Center where there are full uh, emission in terms of free uh, ships bridge simulator. And there are two 360 degree tug simulators as well. So what it means actually, um, when students are studying, um, they can actually create any real world environment. So uh, the lecturers will actually create a scenario which they will face, face in the real situation. And that helps them to run something what is required when, as soon as they actually jump on a, on a boat. These facilities are, are predominantly used by people in, in, in industry as well. So what they do, it means Sometimes when students are doing the tech exercise, they're also interacting with industry clients. So they get to know actually what industry wants and how they want. So um, if we can go back one more slide, Black. Um, Alicia, a couple of more, please. Yeah, so AMC has a lot of vessels. So what it means, students are not only spending the time in simulation, but they also do some of the exercise on these vessels. So the one you on your screen now is um, MV Bluefin. Next one. Ost. Yep. Um, um, Bluefin. This is one of the vessels where students spend most of time uh, doing the exercise. In fact, maritime engineering students, although they actually they don't have to be a seafarer, they spend one week um, chartering on this vessel. What this gives them. Um, an ample opportunity for them to actually know what it looks like to be a real engineer. So they actually go and spend five to 10 days on board 
and do all sorts of exercise. So mostly first and second year of engineering is lab based activities, but third year they will they sp spend real time on board vessel. Um, if we can go back one more slide, Alicia, that is Stephen Brown. So Stephen Brown, this is a permanently anchored vessel, uh, which is located at one of the other campus of AMC called uh, Beauty Point. This vessel has everything in terms of fit outs, but it's permanently anchored. So when students are doing their theory, they will learn their theory into the classroom, but they can straight away go on this vessel and do experiments. So this one has everything in working condition, but it's there for students to, in some, in my opinion, it's, it's for them to actually play and learn a, a real case scenario. So these are the main facilities of AMC, which, which helps students, but I'll introduce you to a couple of more. Next slide. Yep, um, maritime engineering and hydrodynamics facility. Within this, there are three facilities. We call it towing tank, model test basin, and cavitation tunnel res research laboratory. Now, as you can see from this picture, this is a towing tank. Towing tank is, if I put it in a simple word, it's a, it's a very long and thin swimming pool where you attach a, a model to the carriage, where as you can see this, there are a couple of students sitting on the carriage. Underneath there is a model which is attached. On the opposite side, there is a wave maker. So you create the waves and you go up, up the stream and you have data recording system which is attached where the, on the carriage and you collect the data. What it means, you know, before a student design a multimedia boat, they would like to see how it looks like on a model scale. So in a way, it's actually, you know, you, you design a model and that model helps you to collect initial data collection. And that's what they can present to the clients that this is my conceptual design. This is how it's going to perform. If client has a different requirement, then you can modify that model and again do the testing. So before you build a real board, you'd like to know how it's going to perform. And that's where this tank comes handy. So half of the time, there are commercial clients that are working on this tank and half of the time students are working on, on their own designs. Here is an example of one of the, the latest facility we developed. Um, it's called Underwater Collision Research Facility. Um, this is world's first class facility. This is a design in collaboration with Defense Science and Technology Group, um, which is one of the defense group uh, for the government. Uh, the facility is more broadly to assess um, the collision of a submarine. So as you know, you know, when submarines travel under the water, if a something strikes to the submarine, what happens? People may have seen, you know, that if a bird hits the aeroplane, what happens to the aeroplane? A similar kind of scenarios are created here for submarines. That actually gives kind of end cap ratings if you're thinking about a car, that how submarine is going to behave if something strikes. So this is world's first where students will have access to this facility. They can do their undergraduate thesis and work with real clients. Okay, so in, in summary, I would like to say that AMC is number one for practical experience. Our education system or the classes are arranged in a way that they will have classrooms uh, or theory based classrooms activity, but they will also have some sort of practical activities. Um, those practical activities are aligned. That means, you know, that they're, they're within the unit. Um, and when they are studying, that means they can, whatever the activity they do, it's a project based learning activity. So they can carry out as assessment. So there are no traditional assessments like exams only. There will be something else. So students can explore the best way to learn and they can actually get ranking based on the way they perform in any of those assessments. Okay, um, while students are studying, there are um, plenty of opportunities for them to do professional experience. When I say professional experience, these are real experience working with industry. They can have um, industry linked project, Mostly fourth year students will have industry linked project. Those are given by industry clients 
but that means the client will actually be in communication with the student team for them to achieve what they want to do. Students spent 12 weeks working in industry. When I say working, it's engineering Australia's requirement that they should spend 12 weeks. Most of the time, it's easier for students to find this placement because the industry is very big and there is high demand. Students can also work on um, uh, no, other activities, like extracurricular activities. One of them is actually called AMC, it has an MCAT um, organization, which is a small team where students are competing at a national level and international level. So the courses are carefully designed to integrate the theory and making them um, to integrate what they learn in classroom and apply um, in, on, on, real, uh, on real cases scenarios. We are number one for industry connections. Um, as I mentioned that, AM, as Alicia has mentioned, sorry, at the beginning, that AMC is Australia's national institute. Um, it was established about 40 years ago. Um, and in terms of the what we deliver, we do actually four things um, on a regular basis, teaching, training, consultancy, and research. So for a given day, actually, there are a large cohort of students or industry clients working on campus. And that makes that, you know, that if somebody wants to find a maritime engineer or maritime uh, other professionals, their, their first point of contact is AMC because they know that they will actually find them easily. On top of that, we also organized career fair expos once in a year. That actually allows students to, to find their right industry and so they can start working on that connection and get a placement. So um, what about the courses? I'll talk about now courses um, that what we do is all but maritime. Um, all our courses are industry made or I would say, you know, tailor made for industry to meet industry's demand. There are three categories of courses. Um, maritime engineering. Um, hold on, Alicia. So maritime engineering, which is mainly focused about science and engineering courses. There are other courses called um, logistics and management. Those are the courses mainly suited for people with commerce and and um, business background. And there are courses in terms of ocean seafaring. Those are suited for those who wanted to have a like. Uh, trade kind of qualifications or vocational education training. So now let me actually explain you the first set of course, which are called maritime engineering courses. Thank you. Now maritime engineering, you may not have heard, but maritime engineering is, is one of the sub branch of civil engineering. And what it means, these engineers, they design everything that goes into the water. And then there are three branches. Since we are a specialized maritime institute, we have three branches of maritime engineering called naval architecture, ocean engineers, and marine and offshore engineers. Now, naval architecture are those engineers that they design everything which goes into the water, but meant to move from A to B, like ships, small crafts, underwater vehicles, anything which moves, that will be designed by a naval arc. Ocean engineers, they are similar to naval arc, but their design meant to remain fixed, like offshore wind farms, underwater pipelines, underwater cables, anything which is remains fixed, that's, that's need to be designed by ocean engineers. Then marine and offshore engineers are called system engineers. Those engineers, they design everything which goes inside any of these structures. So people may actually sometimes get confused between marine engineering and maritime engineering. Now, marine engineers are professional engineers, so they are similar to any engineers like mechanical, electrical, or electronics engineers. But their role is not to be a seafarer. That means they, they don't work at sea, they rather work on land and they design something that goes into the ocean. Um, and what we have, what we have <clears throat> here is, this course is the first two years are common. That means they can start any of the programs and at the end of the third year, they have to learn which course they wanted to specialize in. These courses have 
added advantage in terms of the accreditation that they are not only accredited by Engineers Australia, but they are also accredited by two other institutes called Royal Institute of Naval Architecture and IMARIST, Institute of Marine and Marine Science and Technology. What it means that student, if they decide to work anywhere in the world, they can use that global registration for certifying the work. So in somehow actually that gives them a global ticket for for them to work anywhere in the world. And that's what most of the maritime companies are. The company might be in, in Perth, but they may have a contract in Malaysia or in Singapore. So these students or the graduates can fly over there and do the work, whatever is required. So um, in terms of their career futures, they are similar to, as I mentioned, any, any, any engineer. So either they remain in maritime industry to work or they can specialize to do something what the general engineering are doing so they can work for um, councils or other authorities where they will be working as a mechanical engineer or civil engineer depending on their choice so they are professional engineers okay global logistics and management um, as you know the the 90 percent of the world business is carried out by sea and the number of ships are increasing day by day but what it means anything what we have in our hand nowadays you know it may have actually manufactured in one country and it's being transported through ships but when we order something online people actually expect that that needs to be delivered within 12 hours or sometime even say within a week it's okay to actually transport some of these small items through aeroplanes but especially the large items are needs to be transported through ships so people who work in global logistics and management their role is to actually provide that service in terms of logistics and management. Now, what you need to come across here, that means you know, when you place an order, the order will go into the warehouse. So they need to know what happens at warehouse. Then they need to transport that through using road transport. So either through minivan or a truck, it will go to the ports. That's where it will be packed into the container. From, from there, the ship will sail. It will go through the international borders and it will arrive to the destination pro, um, port and the process happens in reverse. So what are these people uh, doing in, in terms of global logistics management? The role is to actually make sure that how do you get the smooth operations? And you're not talking about actually one or two containers. Some of the largest ships in the world actually are carrying in excess of 10,000 containers and every containers can have a different contains. So this is the role actually that how, how you are going to help the business. So there are people who actually specialize in maritime law. There are people who specialize in maritime account. I mean, the business that means uh, cash handling and other requirements, um, regulatory requirements. So as I mentioned that this course is more suitable for those people who have a interest in, in, in commerce or business area. And predominantly these are the courses mostly three years. Um, but then there are masters and PhDs. In fact, all the courses will have PhD options. So either they can do bachelor's, master's, or PhD. Thank you, Alicia. Next. Okay, ocean seafaring. Now, this is mostly people might know as a traditional seafaring courses. If within ocean seafaring, there are two streams. There are people who work on a deck side and there are people who work in engine rooms. So the people who mostly work on deck side, they are called um, co called navigation officers. It means they are who will actually train to be the ship navigator or the captain. And there are people who works and looks after the engine rooms. Within engine room systems, they will have a fourth engineer, third engineer, second engineer, chief engineer. Now, chief engineer is is the person who will have like 10 to 15 years of experience and his or her, her role is to make sure the shift functions because when you are at sea you don't have helping hand so that's the career pathway actually people pick up that how i'm i'm going to i want to be involved in shipping and my role is to actually look after the ships people on navigation side their role is mainly to actually navigate the ships um especially at the port you know when you are coming to the port and when you're leaving the to the port and at sea um these courses are predominantly actually linked 
based on uh, work experience and they are um, accredited by Australian Maritime Safety Authority. So it's they also actually called as a ticket, which is required. Ticket is kind of certification that when they come to study, they will do one year course and then they can get a license to go at sea. They spend several years at sea, again, come back and do second course and then they move. So by the time they finished their um, experience and qualification, it may take eight to, to nine years for them to be a certified a captain or a chief engineer. So um, that's mainly about the courses. Now I'll hand it back to Alicia and she will discuss some of the experience from some of our alumni, um, you know, where they are and what they are doing. Uh, and then I'll again kick back towards the end to answer any of your questions. Thank you, Alicia, over to you. Thank you so very much. And uh, there is a, a very big suite of uh, stories we can share with you. And um, I'm very excited to introduce Lorena, who we'll be speaking with um, in regards to her experience. The, the gentleman you see on screen right now is uh, Tim McDonald. He's 30 years old and uh, was an AMC student between 2008 and 2016. And what we can see here, he completed a Bachelor of Marine and Offshore Engineering and has found himself working with Triton Submarines. So he was actually involved in the design and construction of the $35 million DSV limiting factor that he's uh, pictured here with. The submersible uh, in which US explorer uh, Victor Vescovo plunged actually a world record depth, uh, 10,928 metres in the Challenger Deep, which is within the Mariana Trench. So an incredible history making expedition that Tim has been fortunate enough to be involved in. And uh, there's more information on him and many of our other alumni who are around the globe doing incredible um, things with their careers uh, from their studies at the Australian Maritime College. Uh, Lorena, I'm going to hand over to you and I'd love to hear your story. Um, you studied a similar degree to Ashley Johnson, who also did MTM and Maritime Logistics Management. Um, one thing that Ashley said, and I know that you've talked about this with your story, is the, the tight community and moving to Tasmania. Um, and that network and how that strengthened throughout your studies um, and what it was like to move to Tasmania uh, in your experience. So uh, over to you. Thank you, Alicia. Um, so hi everyone, I'm Lorena. I am originally from Colombia, but I have lived um, here in Australia for around seven years. I was living in Melbourne and came here to um, Launceston on April last year. Um, I decided to move here because of um, um, my studies and um, basically at the beginning I wasn't very sure of what I wanted to study. So my previous background is uh, I'm a pharmacist um, but um, I never actually work in that. Um, I have experience in marketing, customer service, retail, um, so I was very very interested in how businesses work. Um, I did a diploma and a certificate in Melbourne of international trade. And since then I became interested in the logistics side, uh, but I never had the opportunity to continue further those studies. So I decided to finally come, um, come here, but um, in the moment of looking for an institute, I wasn't sure where, where to study properly. Um, so my agency helped me with different options. Um, and then we found um, AMC. I, I didn't know much about AMC at the beginning. Um, once I came here and studied at AMC, I, I realized how important institute it is, um, not only here in Australia, but also worldwide. Uh, there were so many students coming from different backgrounds and they just basically come here to Australia to study here at AMC. So I felt very lucky to have like chosen this um, this place to study and um, yeah we it's it's very multicultural in my classes for example um, we are around 20 to 25 students and we can have like 10 different nationalities so uh, we can have a 
students from Portugal, um, from Oman, from India, Sri Lanka, um, from Argentina. So it's amazing that you can exchange so many um, cultures and also different backgrounds. Um, they, most of my classmates, they already have experience in the maritime industry. So for me, it has been like a very enriching experience because I didn't have any experience in the maritime industry itself but i have learned a lot from them and they have shared a lot of insight with me uh, which is very valuable um, on the other side i find very very useful and um like a plus in this experience is the uh, the lectures that i uh, i have had um, they have a lot of experience in the industry i mean they they, they have worked for 20 years uh, or 30 years in the industry and they share all the knowledge with us, which is um, very important, but not, all, not only sharing, also guiding us to where do we need to apply, what type of um, knowledge is important to get in a job and even sitting with our, like, with us saying, okay, these are the jobs in SIG that we can, what in SIG, the page to look for jobs that you can apply. What are the, the things from this unit that is useful for you to apply to these jobs? So that is a very important thing that I find it very valuable. And also, as you were saying, Alicia, and I was sharing with Alicia, um, I, find, I find it here very, um, uh, like a community place where everyone kind of knows each other and um, you can even go to the industry and knock the door and say hi I'm looking for a job and it's a very open community it's a very open community because it's not too big so it helps for people to trust more in other people so um, I really like that experience in that aspect. And also there's so many things to do here in Tasmania that um, I really like, it. for example, um, going outside for hiking, for trail running, um, for um, like uh, lately I've been addicted to uh, discovering new fungi types. There's so many nature here around. So um, it's very different uh, coming from Melbourne to coming to here. Well, coming from Colombia, then to Melbourne, and then here. It's a very small place, but at the same time, there's so many things to do. I was even worried at the beginning, said, oh, I don't know how I'm going to do in Launceston. Um, do I, I'm, I'm going to get bored or something. But actually, no, there's so many things to do. For example, on Saturdays and Sundays, there's usually so many markets, um, mainly the harvest market. That's the one I love. Um, the farmers, they sell their products. It's a very fresh produce. The food here is amazing. Um, so in general, I have liked so many things about here. Um, and also, even though I don't live on campus because um, I decided I, I wanted to live outside because I have my partner, we wanted to get a house. But even though I don't live on campus, I can see that all my friends that live on campus are enjoying it a lot because it feels like a community. They have a lot of supporting staff. Um, so I think that's also an important thing. And um, in regards to university by itself, um, I have found as well a lot of support in finding jobs or recommendations on how to get a job. We have something that it's called Career Connect and they have a lot of webinars and seminars um, that help you to um, organize your cover letter, your resume and explain what is the best way to get, like to present an interview as well. Um, so those aspects are very important. And um, also having fun, there's so many activities in the university and it's not only a matter of studying and studying and studying, it's also about meeting people. I think that's the main thing that can get you to do different jobs. And I find it here, there's so many opportunities that you can meet people doing volunteers as well. Um, and then, yeah, that's a very important thing. Um, I think um, ah, also I applied here through my agency and I got a scholarship of 25%. Um, so that's um, with my um, grades that I got from the certificates and from my university and my past experience. Um, I got that scholarship as well. So that's also really good. 
Wow, thank you so much, Lorita. There's, there's obviously so much to consider when you're moving somewhere new and also your courses. So that community and that industry connection seems to be a really important thing for you and for other students. Do you find that you stay within your course study groups or is the whole of AMC um, really connected as well? Every, everything is really connected and you can basically, if you're interested in, in some specific um, aspect, you can actually knock the door of the lecture and have a chat and maybe get some additional information on whatever you're interested. Um, so lectures are really open and happy that students are interested in different aspects. Um, I am lately more interested to the e-logistics side because now it's a big thing. So I think it's a very important um, unit and also like a very important branch at the moment because we can see how important it's the logistics matter it's growing every time more so it's a really good opportunity and it's good that we have the support from our lecturers i think that's an important very important thing absolutely well thank you so much for sharing your story with us um, there is some information up there if people are looking for uh, contact details but i know from previous sessions there are lots of questions that tend to come in so at this point i will say thank you to you both and uh, we're going to hand over and open up to some questions from our webinar participants Thank you so much, um, Vikram, Alicia and Lorena. That was a fantastic presentation. I was really engaged um, listening to you all. And Lorena, it's, it's great to see um, how you've engaged yourself with AMC and the community. It's really lovely to hear uh, from a former international student at UTAS as well. Um, I can completely relate to that. So thank you so much for sharing your experience. And Vikram, uh, what a great way to, to clarify things for students who don't come from an AMC background or for agents that don't have that knowledge. I think you clarified it really, really well, especially the differences between the maritime uh, engineering courses. I think that was really clear. Uh, we are just starting to get some questions through. Sure. Um, I actually have one question here. Vikram, maybe I'll... Uh, Give that one to you to answer if that's okay. So um, Adnan is asking, what are the career career prospects after a degree in global logistics and maritime management? Okay, well, that's that's a very good question. Um, so career aspects are those people actually involved in freight forwarding companies, logistics companies, or those people are involved in, in maritime business. When I say maritime business, that means working in import and export sector so once you have completed um, you are either working for a small firm or a big company because what happens everything which is grown up in the country or it's manufactured within the country it has to be transported to the port and from port it travels on a ships so depending on actually where you are you you have a job prospects so either if you decide to work for a in fact, a previous, uh, similar to Lorena, we had previously a student who was working for a trucking company. Um, and uh, you also saw a picture of um, Ashley Harris. Um, she is now working for ANL Container Line. So she is working in Tasmania, where actually we are, you know, Tasmania is a hub for fresh produce. But how to assist farmers in exporting that? So exporting that overseas, where Ashley is working for ANL Container Line and organizing those who are involved in in containers, uh, container container transport. So the career aspects are actually unlimited, in my opinion. Um, either you can work at ports, you can work for shipping companies, or you can work for um, chartering companies. Thank you. That's fantastic. Thanks, Vikram. Um, and I know that um, global logistics is an area that's booming. Um, and, you know, usually when we speak to students and learn nodding, you know, e-logistics, it's becoming an area that's a really popular um, um, choice for students um, in terms of um, job opportunities, etc. cetera. Um, we are yeah. starting to get more questions in, but I might um, um, ask... Can I, um, I can yeah, sure, okay. I'll add something. So, you know, if people may have actually heard about Amazon 
um, and, and doing their business and how big their warehouses yeah. are. If somebody is actually learning global logistics and management, for them, the entire world is one warehouse. And for their job is to actually make sure how things go from one end to another end, where monies are exchanged, where products are delivered and customer service are maintained. Those are the main career aspects they actually look at it in summary. Yeah, that's that's definitely yeah a, a fantastic example. And you know, uh, there are other freight companies if you to look at international ones like DHL, etc. So um, lots of opportunities there. I might move on to another question. Um, we've got a question here. Um, can we change our electives later on during the course, or um, can it not be? A, can someone not do that after they have enrolled? So I guess I think the question is more around. Can students switch their areas um, when they choose a course? Yes, so if they are within the discipline, then they can change easily without any, any issues. So for example, if I give you maritime engineering, within maritime engineering, we have three specialization, but first two years are common. So students don't have to have a choice. They can start with any of the program and at the end of the third year, they can decide which area they wanted to specialize in. So it does give them, two years of window for them to choose the program. But in other case, like let's say if they want, if they started with maritime engineering and if you want to be a global logistics and management, then that's a completely a different discipline. In that case, you can still do the changeover, but the credit may not be as much as you would have actually thought. And that's really good to know. I think two years is plenty of time for someone to, or student to understand you know what area you can go into so that leaves the last year it's sort of like our engineering degrees where the first year is all core subjects and then you go into your second year so that's fantastic um we've got i've got another question so in terms of um scholarships are there any specific australian maritime scholarships at the moment for students maybe alicia yeah. or vikram Yep. Also, as you know, TIS scholarships is applied to any of the international students uh, who are doing any courses. The Tasmanian international, international Scholarships. But there are many AMC-specific scholarships available for domestic and international students. Um, Alicia may have the list, or um, I can actually put you in contact with the scholarship officer to actually provide. But in fact, it was about two weeks ago, I was just discussing all the scholarships for 2021, and they're ready to go on the web in near future. But most of them are sim similar to 2020, but it will be there. So the short answer Absolutely. is yes, there are scholarships. Yeah, and just a couple of scholarships that uh, we could make note of is um, ones that are supported by industry. Uh, Throughout the webinar, we talked about our industry partnerships and our connections uh, globally with the maritime sector. And a lot of those partnerships have resulted in scholarships as well for specific disciplines, but also um, for internationals and domestic students coming into different areas of study. Um, so definitely a wide range across all study areas and a varying criteria for all of those. So we definitely encourage people to have a look at those scholarship opportunities. Yeah, and I've, I've just brought up um, some of the scholarships that are available. It's all available on our website if students wanna have a look. Um, but some of the ones we currently have is, you know, um, Women in Seafaring Scholarship. We've got International Women in Maritime Engineering Scholarship. We've got AMC Seafaring Scholarship and AMC Global Logistics Relocation Bursary. So we've got a few that's happening. And the, as Vikram mentioned, you know, the, they're looking into 2021, which will be quite similar to 2020. So on top of that, the Tasmanian International Scholarship, which is a 25% tuition fee discount. Um, and that depends on your previous grades, like um, Lorna mentioned before. So um, happy to share all of that information uh, with you. Um, all afterwards. Uh, we do have one question that comes in, that just came in, which is a really good question. Um, Vikram, do you know um, if students are studying online, how will the classes be conducted? Um, well, so we have actually tried to mimic the, the classroom environment as same to actually online environment. So most of the things have actually, we have a smooth transition where we have conducted everything what we can do on face-to-face. Um, face-to-face classrooms. 
only thing actually is students are not able to feel and touch and that's the main main drawback of actually online technology but they are in fact able to do everything um, similar to what we are doing and it, it went well in fact some students were saying that online was much better because rather than them actually taking photos or taking notes and recording everything was provided them and they studied at their at pace whenever they like and how they like so there are positives and negatives of online but it, it worked out well so so far yeah no student has any disadvantage rather they they are happy that's really good and um we've just had a student um asking if the global logistics and maritime management is online yes it is available online starting from semester two this year so um in feel fact, free uh, to in yep, fact just to add on that so global logistics and management always had two modes either mm -hmm. on campus or off campus so that area was available on campus even if even if you know we were um, not in that covid situation so if people likes to do online without coming to australia they can definitely um i've got another question here um so in terms of um so vikram i get that I get asked this question a lot from students. Um, mm -hmm. Are there any extra qualifications or registrations that students must um, complete after they've completed their degree, whether a master, whether it be a master's or a bachelor degree? So after they've finished their degree, is there any sort of um, no, external qualification they need? Yeah. Um, I got your question. In fact, there are advantages. So if students are doing, let's say, maritime engineering, um, they are not just only doing maritime engineering. There is one extra certificate they will do that is called elements of shift safety. That one is about survival at sea, um, as well as firefighting training and those things, um, which students will do in the third year and they get extra certificate for that. But the, in a way that helps them that the day they finish their degree, they can go and work on any of the ships without going through any safety trainings because they would have gone through the training here and that helps them to find the employment straight away. And that's one of the uniqueness about AMC's program that they are industry ready when I mention. That means we are we prepare them that this is what they need to do in order to actually meet the requirement of the industry. In fact, even in year one, as soon as student enters, we we work with them. There is a safety training course called white card training. That training actually allows students to um, be aware of safety requirement of any workplace, including actually if they're going to visit any shipyards or ships. So what it means, you know, students, once they have completed that training, they can go and visit any ships or any of the shipyards with the certificate. It does give them flexibility. And it's good for us that when we take group of students for industry visits, we can easily get an entry because the students are well-trained. So in my opinion, actually, you know, Yes, there is a final certificate of the course, but there are so many other small activities which students will go through that helps them to to be industry ready straight away after the graduation. That's great to know. Um, and I hope that's clarified um, some questions um, from students. Usually um, that always tends to be the question as to what happens after I finish my degree. Do I need to study more? Do I need more qualifications? So thank you so much for that, Vikram. We have a question here from Raj, which I think I can answer, which is more of a recruitment question. So uh, can you revise the entry requirements and any packaged offers such as English, Bachelor or Master? So Raj, yes. Um, so if you do require English, that's mainly um, our international admissions team will look after that. So you, once you submit your application, um, th through our portal, um, you'll be assessed to see whether you need um, extra weeks of English and that can be packaged with your bachelor degree um, or following a master's. So usually it's an English with bachelor if, you're, if your intention is to start as your principal course of study as bachelor. And once you complete your bachelor degree, you can stay on. Um, and if you do uh, stay on to do your master's with us, you can receive um, you may be eligible to receive a 10% tuition fee discount as well because you've already studied your bachelor degree with us. So it won't come as a full package, but it will come as an English plus bachelor and then moving on or an English plus master. So I guess it depends on your previous study. Um, I hope that's clarified the question. Um, so Vikram, in terms of um, um, 
job opportunities at the moment within sort of the the maritime sector? What's the most popular sort of um, uh, jobs happening right now that's really in demand for students? Okay, well, that's a very good question. And I'm happy to actually mention this, that maritime engineering, uh, in fact, most of our courses are specialized courses. What it means when students find their employment, their initial salary will be five to 10% higher than the generic entry requirements. So for example, maritime engineers are get paid five to 10% higher than the general engineers in the industry. In terms of actually where the works, um, there is big amount of work going in South Australia as of now. As Alicia mentioned that Australian government has invested into naval shipbuilding program that is 90 billion worth of investment by 2025. When I say it's, it's a 90 billion and that is predominantly uh, about maritime industry. In fact, um, you would also come across that slide where Alicia talked about Naval Shipbuilding College. Um, that's a virtual college government has to set up to attract more people or more students to join the industry so they can actually meet the workforce requirements. So Naval Shipbuilding College in somehow is actually providing that that awareness to students who are in year 9, 10, or they are in, in year 11 and 12. So there is a specialized industry and how can they be part of that government's missions? Because, you know, Australia is a maritime nation and maritime industry is big here. And the reason is um, most countries actually use maritime for three purposes. One thing is trade, transport, and safety of the nations. Now trade and transport is made, maritime transport is the cheapest mode of transport. And that's why, you know, it's very difficult to actually transfer anything through road or um, aeroplanes. But once you put it on a ship, ships are normally designed to float and they require energy just to move from A to B. And that's why it's one of the economical, as well as in fact, most environmental friendly as well. The amount of emissions produced by shipping is the least in terms of the tonnage they transfer compared to any mode. So it's a big industry and there are plenty of job opportunities throughout Australia, but marine industry is predominantly in South Australia. Offshore oil and gas industry is in Western Australian coast. And then um, other industry is predominantly there in, in Queensland. But we can see actually when we had a global map, our students are all over the place because Sydney and Melbourne are the hub for any industry. That's fantastic. I actually, um, a little bit off topic now, kind of, but uh, when I was in the Middle East, I had the opportunity to actually visit one of our ports, uh, though it were sponsors, and I was fascinated to see all the vessels and, um, you know, all of the things that go on within the port. Um, it actually was a real eye opener. Um, and um, I guess uh, to the audience, um, you know, studying any degree in AMC, I think, will take you far uh, way beyond what you expected. And, you know, um, I don't know if Vikram would ag agree with me, but, you know, you don't have to. Like, so a lot of people I've talked to, you know, they, they sort of get confused as to, you know, it's, it's a very specialized degree. You know, I want to work in different areas, but I don't want to do this degree because I might be, you know, stuck to this sort of job opportunity later on only. So um, Vikram, if you can elaborate on that a little bit further in terms of, you know, studying a maritime degree, it doesn't mean that you have to stick to that sort of type of um, sect sector that you've studied. You can also progress into different areas or opportunities yes. as uh, well. Uh, that's, that's exactly true, uh, Mona. And in fact, I can say, you know, Maritime engineering is, we call it as extreme engineering design because when you design something which goes into the wash, into the water, in oceans, there are waves, there are wind, and there is no support. So your structure has to be strong enough. It means if a civil engineer designs something on land, that means land doesn't move. So he only has to look after how to look at the foundation. But when maritime engineers are designing the foundation for offshore wind farms, they have to make sure that, you know, in ocean environment, how it's going to perform. So many times, in fact, students are working as soon as they have engineering degrees, they can work into a general sector. In fact, within our masters, we have one academic currently who finished 
um, maritime engineering with us back in 2005, I think. Then he went into um, maritime industry where he worked for four, four to six years, and then he returned. Now he is working for a local civil engineering company where they are mainly involved in the, um, buildings and bridges. But he, he was easily absorbed in that industry because of his high experience. And why it's that, you know, that when you work for a heavy industry, which is difficult, you can easily work for the other industry. So you don't have to be in maritime industry, but you can actually choose your career pathways uh, depending on what you want. In fact, there is another example where I think uh, there are six of our students working for one um, company in northwest of Tasmania. That company is, it has nothing to do with maritime industry, rather it's a heavy engineering company. Uh, but they were, they were able to actually absorb our students. The reason is because some of the knowledge they had for shipping was such at high level that they can easily apply in general industry. So my simple answer is yes, you can stay in maritime industry, but also you can go into general industry. Um, and there won't be any issues. Many people have done that and, and it's easily doable. Thank you. That's, yeah, that's such an interesting perspective. I never really um, thought about it that way because, you know, as you mentioned, if you study AMC, you can do the rest below. So it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, it's, I think it's a great selling point for students. So for the audience, if, if you have, if, if you're an agent, you know, if you have students who are interested in the engineering side or maritime side, it's definitely worthwhile looking into our courses. I think it's an area that's, um, that's not really talked about too much or really um, not understood really well. So I think that's a really good point. Um, you know, students who are interested in doing jobs other than just maritime, they are able to, and they're going to be already highly skilled. Um, yeah. Lorena, um, I've got a question. Thing, oh yeah, um, go for you. I was going, to, I was going yeah. to clarify one thing that many times people ask me if they have bachelor's in other engineering, can they do master's in maritime engineering? That's right, um, yeah. And my, my answer is yes, you don't have to have bachelor's in, in, in maritime or even maritime related. So even in global logistics management, people with Bachelor of Business can enter into global logistics management. In maritime engineering masters, people with uh, civil engineering, mechanical engineering, or any general engineering can enter into maritime engineering. And I guess that's what maritime engineering is, how you applied your skills from other discipline into maritime sector. And that's what all AMC is about. That's a really Sorry, good point. No, no, no. That's okay. That's a good. That's a good point for the agents who are thinking about entry requirements. Um, so that's fantastic, Lorena. I'm going to jump to you. So, um, what are your career um, aspirations at the moment? So, what are your plans after you complete everything? Yeah, so many plans. Um, I haven't decided 100%, but I really like, as I was saying before, the e logistics side. I really like the part of the warehouses as well. There's a lot of technology that is um, every year is put into warehouses, and um, and I find that very in, like I really like it a lot. Um, I also like the inventory side of it. Um, so there's so many opportunities that, that I don't really want to just say I want this because um, maybe there's an opportunity um, in ports as well. I really like the ports. We actually went to visit the Burnie port and I found that very interesting too. Um, so um, there's so many different opportunities that um, I haven't decided yet what I like, but I do like a lot the e-logistics side. That's fantastic. Well. We are almost at five o'clock. Um, thank you so much. I will wrap up the presentation. Uh, Vikram, thank you so much to your insights. It was really lovely to hear um, the way you explained things, which was an eye opener. Alicia, thank you so much for explaining all about industry. And Lorena, thank you so much for sharing your experience with us. It's always really great to hear our current students speak. So. Thank you, thank you so much. And to our audience, thank you so much for joining. Um, if there are any questions that, that were unanswered, it doesn't look like it, but we will get back to you individually. There will be, um, this presentation will be up and a recording of this session will be up as well. So thank you so much for joining and hope everyone has a great morning, afternoon and night. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you, bye for, thank you. Bye for now. <laughs>